Um, so Councillor Gower and I have been sort of working off uh, each other this week and uh, I'll be uh, chairing this morning's uh, meeting. On va commencer la réunion. Il est important de souligner que la ville d'Ottawa se trouve sur un territoire non cédé de la nation algonquine Anishinaabek, dont la culture et la présence ont enrichi et continuent d'enrichir ces terres. So moving to quorum, which I believe we have, I'll ask Kelly just to run through a, um, a quorum check. We, we do have, I believe, uh, might have a couple councillors that, that aren't here. I know some are still without power, um, but, uh, but we do have enough to be able to carry on with the meeting today, uh, which is required because we do have at least one item uh, that uh, must be dealt with due to statutory requirements. Um, <clears throat> Councillor Brockington, which I see him as an attendee, so he might need to accept the call. Uh, Councillor Kuche. Present. Councillor Curry. Here. Councillor Dudas. Mm -hmm. Councillor Hubley. To accept as a panelist, you should have a prompt. Okay. They, they... Uh, present, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, Councillor Kitts. Councillor Leeper. Uh, Councillor Menard may not be able to attend. Uh, Councillor Tierney. Present. Uh, Councillor Moffat. Here. And Councillor Gower. Here. You have quorum. Thank you. The benefits of thin walls at City Hall is that Jeff can just yell through the wall to Councillor Brockington. People think there's like corruption at City Hall, but no, no, it's just because the walls are so thin that we just hear each other talk. So that's what we always know what's going on behind each other's backs. See there. Riley knew how to get on because Jeff was able to yell through the wall. All right, so this is a public meeting to consider the proposed comprehensive official plan and zoning bylaw amendments listed items two and four through six on today's agenda. For the items just mentioned, only those who make oral submissions today or written submissions before the amendments are adopted may appeal the matter to the Ontario Land Tribunal. In addition, the applicant may appeal the matter to the Ontario Land Tribunal if Council does not adopt amendment within 90 days of receipt of the application for zoning bylaw amendment and 120 days for an official plan amendment. To submit written comments on these amendments prior to consider their consideration by City Council on June 8th, please email or call the committee or Council coordinator. Declarations of interest. Seeing none. Confirmation of minutes for the meeting of May 12, 2022. You'll note that the statutory statement on the minutes or the statutory statement on the OP and zone items, which I just read, was not included in the minutes, but has since been updated. So if you had gone through them with a fine tooth comb, like I know you all do, um, you will notice that that wasn't there. But now it is. So everything's okay. So can we carry the minutes for uh, our 62nd meeting of planning committee for this term? Carried. Carried. And now I will shift to uh, Co-Chair Gower, who has a motion to defer. So we have um, we have a number of nine items on the agenda today, and uh, two of the items are somewhat substantive and have a um, number of delegations and uh, people interested in speaking to them. Uh, so given the situation, we're going to defer items one and seven. Uh, the other items were either um, items that we could deal with uh, relatively easily today or that had the statutory requirements uh, from a timeline perspective that had to be dealt with today and could not be deferred. So Councillor Gower. Thanks, Scott. So whereas on May 21st, over the Victoria Day long weekend, a significant weather event impacted the city of Ottawa, which caused extensive damage to trees, property, and the electrical grid. And whereas city resources and attention are being focused on the cleanup and restoration of services, and whereas large portions of the city remain without power and the ability to access virtual meetings, and whereas it is appropriate to defer item one, 2022 Affordable Housing Capital Strategy and Update, a citywide report to ensure the inclusion of councillors and members of the public wishing to speak to this matter, and whereas item seven, Site Plan Control 2020 Walkley Road and 2935 Conroy Road is adjacent to areas still impacted by power, power outages, Therefore, be it resolved that Planning Committee defer items one and seven to the June 9th, 2022 meeting of Planning Committee. So on defer, is that carried? Carried. All right, thank you. Carried. So we'll then run through the rest of the agenda. So items two and 
and three are both 311 Somerset, 234, 36 um, O'Connor Street. Um, one's the official plan zoning by limit. The other one is the heritage permit, which went through the Build Hair Subcommittee a couple weeks ago. Um, item four, so we're holding that because we do have some speakers on that. Uh, item four is a zoning by for 180 Canada Avenue. We do have uh, one or two speakers on that, so we will hold that as well. Item number five is a zoning bylaw amendment for 353 Jerry Lalonde Drive. Uh, we don't have any delegations on this. It's a series of back-to-back -to -back townhomes in the subdivision out in Councillor Kitts's ward. Uh, we have the applicant here, but my guess is the applicant would be okay not to speak were we to approve this. So through, yeah, through, through you, Mr. Chair, yes, um, we are here to answer questions if required, but otherwise um, are okay to continue. Okay, thank you. So on item uh, five is that, usually I like to read it, the, uh, just bear with me here. So item five is that the planning committee recommend council approve an amendment to zoning bylaw 2008-250 for 353 Jerry Lawn Drive to permit a subdivision consisting of on-street townhouse and back-to-back -back townhouse units on public streets as detailed in document two, and two, that planning committee approve the consultation detail section of this report. Is that item carried? Carried. 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 Thank you very much. Item six is a zoning bylaw amendment for 257, 261, 269, and 277 King Edward Avenue and 260 Murray Street. Um, again, so we don't have any speakers on this item. Uh, the applicant, oh, applicant's representative, uh, Dennis Jacobs, is here if there are any questions. Uh, but given that there are no, uh, there are no delegations, and I believe Mr. Jacobs would be okay if we approve this at this time. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, I see Councillor Fleury is here as well, where the item is in their war. So it's um, just... The plan can we recommend council approve an amendment to zoning bylaw 2008-250 for 257, 261, 269, 277 King Edward Avenue and 260 Murray Street to print an eight-story 121 suite hotel with ground floor commercial as detailed in document two. Uh, Councillor Fleury, any uh, comments, any concerns? No. Nope. And number two, that plan committee approve the consultation detail section of this report. So on that item, is that approved? Carried. Carried. Thank you so much, Gary. Item seven was deferred. Item eight is an update and next steps on the residential mural one year pilot program. Up. So I know that we all love to have these one off motions come forward where we approve murals. The idea is that we won't have to do that anymore. So planning committee recommend uh, that one, we receive the 2021 residential mural one year pilot program update Two, approve the amendments to the residential murals bylaw as per document one. A, broadening the bylaw to bylaw scope to permit murals in all zones beyond residential. And B, renaming the document the Ottawa Mural Bylaw. That's, that's a pivotal part right there, renaming the document. And three, approve extending the mural pilot for an additional year ending May 1st, 2023, after which the Ottawa Mural Bylaw and program would become permanent. Any comments or need to hold that or can we approve that? I don't know if you've ever said the word mural as much as that, but it's the word becomes oddly, you know, strange afterwards, after a while. You say mural, mural, mural. Um, on the item? Carried. Carried. Thank you so much. And item nine is an item from Councillor Leeper, which I did agree that we would carry forward today only because... It's Councillor Leeper. Uh, it's a motion for the Committee of Adjustment, uh, an application for 411 and 415 Ravenhill. I believe there's a bit of a, a substitute. Um, so I'll allow uh, Councillor Leeper to interject at this moment. Uh, thanks. And if I could just ask to have the motion put on the screen, please. Uh, there are a 
a uh, number of homes that were built um, in Westboro ahead of the Westboro infill study going through. The development uh, already built is, is no longer in compliance with the zoning uh, with respect to some of the setbacks um, and um, the driveway lengths. Uh, so they're seeking permission to go to the Committee of Adjustment uh, to normalize that. I put it in my newsletter this weekend um, and uh, didn't hear back on that. Um, so maybe I will just ask the scroll down to the therefore be it resolved that the planning committee recommend council approve pursuant to section 45 of the planning act that an application to the committee of adjustment be permitted in respect to the properties 411 415 419 and 423 raven hill avenue i think we've added a couple of addresses to that um, after looking at it more closely for minor variances associated with reduced setbacks for an accessory structure reduced pathway width reduced length of two parking spaces and an easement for the benefit of residents at 411 and 423 raven hill avenue All right, thank you. I did, I did not receive a, a deluge of emails or correspondence from other members of council on this file, so I think we're okay to uh, to approve it uh, today. So on that uh, on that motion, carried. 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 Thank you. So we will go back then to item numbers two and three, which we'll uh, deal with concurrently, which is the official plan amendment and zoning bylaw for three eleven Somerset Street West and two thirty four thirty two thirty six O'Connor Street. Um, I know several members of this committee are actually on Bill Air subcommittee, but since we aren't all, I will ask um, uh, Mr. Goche just for a, a brief uh, summary of the application before us today. Okay, so uh, we have an official plan amendment, zoning by the amendment and new construction at uh, 311 Somerset Street West and 234, 236 O'Connor Street. Uh, those properties are designated uh, under part five of the Ontario Heritage Act. Could I get the next slide, please? So uh, the property is more specifically located on the Northwest corner of uh, Summer Street, uh, Somerset Street West and O'Connor Street. The next slide, please. So uh, the staff recommendation is to permit an 18 story mixed use building. I could get the next slide. So the uh, section of the secondary plan or the policies of the secondary plan that are involved here are the uh, Norton character area, the central character area and the maximum building height schedule, schedule H1 and uh, the land use uh, H2. So the, uh, the zoning bylaw amendment is to uh, rezone the entire property as TM with an exception and a height schedule to make sure that the development will happen as um, discussed throughout the process. Could I get the, the next slide, please? So uh, uh, this is the height schedule. Uh, it presents the model in which the, uh, the building is supposed to fit. So um, the uh, present secondary plan designation on the north of the property, including one of the consolidated lot, allows for uh, 16 stories for high rise. Uh, is also zone R5 for high density residential. Uh, the uh, remaining three properties to the south are designated TM uh, and uh, under the secondary plan are permitted to go uh, up to uh, nine stories. So uh, what's being done here, uh, as you can see uh, with area B, is a four-story podium, a brick podium that wraps around uh, the development. This to ensure scale with uh, the existing uh, build form and character around. Uh, you also see area A as being the footprint for the tower, which is a very small footprint, uh, 614 square meters. And I should point out that the urban design guidelines um, allow for maximum of 750. So we're talking about a very slim tower on a uh, podium, uh, which presents significant step backs. Uh, if you look uh, along Somerset Street, in addition to the setback of the podium, uh, where public art and trees are being proposed, an additional 6.4 meter step back and it's being put at 6.4 just to allow for a little 
uh, wiggle room during construction, but it, in reality, it's going to be closer to 6.5. So you, you get on top of the four-story podium, a 6.4, 6.5 step back for the tower. And also uh, to the west, in addition to the inter-site yard setback, you, we also get a 3.5 meter uh, tower step back on, on top of the four-story podium. Why a four-story podium? Uh, this is to respect the datum line projected towards the west to an existing uh, office building uh, that is also bricked at four story at the uh, northeast uh, corner of Bank Street and uh, Somerset. It's also important to look at uh, area D on top of the height schedule. Uh, this is an enclosure for the uh, garage access. It's four meter high and it will act as providing a buffer uh, to the, um, for the, the windows, the overlooking windows on, on the uh, north wall of the podium. So it will obstruct the perspective down to the abutting uh, private amenities areas to the north. And this enclosure was also discussed with the property owner to the north. Um, uh, who also wished for that uh, the garage access to be enclosed uh, to avoid uh, light pollution, noise pollution, gas, pollu uh, uh, gas pollution. Um, I think that summarizes uh, pretty much the, uh, the proposal. Is there another slide? I, I think there's another slide. Yeah, the section 37, uh, the cash contribution will be uh, close to 600,000. Um, most of it going to uh, the Ward Affordable Housing Fund with uh, five, uh, 50,000 uh, to future community gardening needs in the Ward for the non-cash contribution. We'll have publicly accessible bicycle parking, a bike repair station, 11 uh, electric vehicle charging stations, energy efficient building technologies, public art, and uh, the public art, we, we, there's a potential for three pieces uh, along Somerset at the corner and along O'Connor um, and uh, seven uh, large units. Can I get the next slide, please? Yeah, so just to show you the, from the property from different perspectives. So the image to the left is a uh, perspective from Somerset and to the right is from O'Connor. So the green, uh, the green grass that you see there is part of the consolidation. It's, uh, there used to be a house on the property got demolished. Uh, it's now used as a temporary park, but will be part of that development. And that uh, property there with the grass there is the one that I was indicating earlier uh, where uh, R5 is permitted. So high density residential and the 16th story under the secondary plan. So can I get the next slide, please? Okay, so uh, you, you get the uh, elevations here. Um, so the one to the left is uh, from uh, Somerset Street West, where you see the four-story podium and the tin tower that I was explaining, and where you also see the setback and step back on the west side next to the houses. Uh, you've got the side plan there that I don't, I don't really need to repeat, but I, I can point at the treatment along the two streets uh, with the trees. Um, so the next slide, please. Uh, and now you see the, the west facade. Uh, with the podium, and you can see on the left of the west facade the significant step back along Somerset. Uh, you also have the east facade that demonstrate that the podium wraps around uh, the entire development, the brick podium. Uh, so because of the brick house that are uh, adjacent to the west, and you also get to see the north facade. If you look at the um, at the bottom of it, uh, you get to see the ramp. Uh, enclosure that I was referring to. So throughout the subsequent site plan approval process, uh, we will uh, deal with a landscaping plan that will provide uh, for landscaping on top of the um, garage enclosure to soften its appearance. And I should say that the garage enclosure was uh, kept to a minimum of four meters. In reality, it, the, the uh, enclosure will be closer to 3.9, but again, We've given a little bit wiggle room for construction. Uh, so um, can I get the next slide, please? 
Uh, and it, this is very important because this uh, development went to uh, UDRP on two occasions. And what you see on the left is the initial proposal, which was suggesting a, uh, a first mass uh, at the bottom of the tower of nine stories. So uh, staff requested for a more prominent podium to respect the scale. So the, uh, the uh, proposal was revised for the one in the mill where you see a, a, a mid section, a mid portion in white material. Staff was still not satisfied with the mass of that um, mid portion. So the, uh, the design to the, the right, the last iteration uh, shows the podium with the step back. So we now have a slim tower sitting on a podium uh, that is to scale with, uh, with its, its context. As I explained earlier, it, uh, it respects a datum line projected towards the west to another existing brick office building at the corner of Bank and um, Somerset Street. So I think that is it for me. Uh, this is the datum line that I was uh, referring to. Uh, so you get to see on the upper left image, the office building, and uh, you see the podium. And then at the bottom, you see the projected lines. It's also important to uh, uh, see that um, across O'Connor to the east, uh, you see an existing uh, higher mid-rise building that is all bricked. Uh, keep in mind that nine stories could have been permitted. And uh, what's important also, the subject side, the zoning north of it is R5, which is high density residential. If we're across O'Connor on the east, uh, the zoning to the north is R4. Um, so the, what I should say as a, as a, um, uh, the end of this presentation is that uh, because of this tower, uh, what's gonna end up uh, being built and what will remain is the existing houses to the north. Uh, there will not be sufficient distance for uh, tower separation. So those uh, properties to the north will remain with this uh, four-story brick podium and, a, uh, and the, uh, the tower on top of it for a total of 18 stories, what could have ended up uh, from um, Cooper to Somerset <clears throat> could have potentially be a tower on the corner of Cooper and O'Connor plus a nine-story mass just uh, south of it. Instead of that, what we're getting, we're keeping the two houses there. And uh, we're going to end up with a slim tower that's going to be significantly stepped back from Somerset Street. And as you can see, it also uses a more discrete material uh, in addition to having a, a small footprint. So uh, this is my presentation. Okay, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. I know uh, Ashley Kutsar was here as well. And, um... She was working on the heritage aspect. I'm not sure, Ashley, if you have anything to add in addition to what uh, Steve presented. Um, actually, Co-Chair, not very much. Uh, Steve touched on most of the aspects. Uh, I was just going to talk about the HCD guidelines from the study, um, which echo essentially what's in the CDP policies. Okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, both Steve and Ashley are here for questions. <clears throat> if, uh, if those arise after we go through the rest of the, uh, the presentations. Uh, we'll go now to, um, to I believe, Tim Bede is here presenting on behalf of the applicant, if I'm not mistaken. Hello, Chair and uh, committee members. My name is Tim Bede. I'm from FOTEN um, Planning and joined here by my colleague, Miguel Tremblay with FOTEN, as well as Roberto Campos with the architecture team and Josh there with the property ownership group. I'll be brief in, in discussing briefly the, the policy context um, for the site and then pass it over to Roberto to discuss the design and those uh, important design revisions and changes that have occurred since the initial application, which have responded, uh, we think, substantially to um, conversations we've had, ongoing conversations with uh, planning staff and heritage staff, as well as community members and, and the ward councillor to try to <clears throat> find that best design fit for this lot in terms of respecting both the existing character along Somerset, which is a, a unique heritage corridor, as well as uh, residential intensification objectives of the official plan in the city and, and finding that balance as well. So I'll um, just to, to just aware of time, I'll, I'll skip ahead a few slides um, just uh, to the, the policy slides here for the secondary plan. And then uh, just one more 
yeah, here we go. This is a good one. Um, yeah, you can go back to the, the previous slide there. Thank you so much. Um, so as Steve was mentioning, the, the site-specific official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment are uh, meant to recognize the full development potential in the subject lands um, through applying um, what we believe is a consistent land use designation and zoning on the lots, um, recognizing their consolidation and, and um, their existence now as, as one lot for zoning purposes and for redevelopment purposes. Uh, this uh, includes modest increase to the maximum height provisions of the secondary plan. Um, and uh, a consistent designation in zoning and, and uh, the secondary plan on the entirety of the subject lands. Um, so we believe that the maximum building height that we're asking for is considered appropriate uh, as the proposal um, maintains um, adherence and promotion of the Center Town Community Design Plan, the secondary plan, as well as the overarching uh, official plan, creating a very skyline, creating transition in heights from those heights that are permitted um, to the north, um, 16 stories on the subject property going up to 27 stories further north, uh, and then transitioning down south towards uh, more mid and low rise properties and, and res respecting that character and massing along the traditional main street, which is uh, the Somerset, uh, Somerset Street corridor. Uh, the proposed massing and height, uh, we believe, ref respects and respe uh, reflects the existing community character, uh, as well as the policy framework um, through the, the low-rise podium, the four-story podium, which is the, the, the most important interface with Somerset Street and O'Connor at the, this is a prominent corridor, um, making the, ensuring that the, the podium respects those traditional Main Street guidelines, as well as um, the character of the area and the, and the heritage and the, the more low rise um, built form and massing and, and, and rhythm along the street. And then transitioning to the north to the tower um, uh, on the portion of the property and, and, and that uh, was previously considered um, for that type of height and density. Uh, we believe the amendments are modest and mostly meant to ref reflect this current condition and lot ownership and consolidation uh, as we move towards uh, the site plan control and, and, and redevelopment of the site. Uh, the design changes, which Roberto will discuss in, ref um, in a, just a moment, uh, the architect will, uh, we believe, reflect the comprehensive discussions that we've had with planning staff, heritage, neighbors, and the ward counselor um, to ensure uh, adequate transition from the, the rear yard um, abutting neighbors, as well as um, that appropriate massing and scale along the, the traditional main street. Uh, the relocation of the massing, as Steve mentioned, from the mid-rise portion of the building to the tower moves the building mass away from that sensitive interface along Somerset Street and retains uh, Skyview sunlight uh, and the visual integrity of the, this heritage corridor. I'll just pass it off to Roberto now. We can skip ahead a few slides. He'll discuss the design, some of the revisions that we've gone through, and how we arrived at what we're proposing today. Great. Thank you. Um, and, and certainly thank you to Steve Gauthier, who prepared a, a fairly comprehensive review. I'm just going to add a, a little bit more to it. Uh, uh, you know, this proposal is a result of various design iterations strengthened by the comments received from various discussions and presentations by our, our team to planning staff, the counselor's office, uh, two presentations to the urban design review panel, heritage staff, our heritage consultant, John Stewart, and with multiple members of the community. Uh, all in an attempt to address the importance of the streetscape, community concerns, and ultimately provide an anchor and positive contribution to the vibrancy of Somerset Village. As you can see here, these are quick massings that we had done at the very beginning uh, that we do really just to kind of get an understanding of the potential of the site, the existing zoning constraints of the site, the, the geometries of the site, possible options for where parking can access, and so forth and so forth. Maybe next slide. Uh, at one point, we were asked to do an investigation on sites ABC along uh, Cooper to confirm that those sites would never alone be able to support a high-rise tower. Uh, we did that study. The sites were too small to ever on their own be able to provide high-rise. In the end, each floor would consist of one unit. Uh, it's just not, we're not that type of city that, that provides that type of development. Uh, and But we went through that process at the request of, of uh, the city's planning staff. Next slide. Again, this is the informal UDRP presentation that we, we went for, again, trying to overlay now a bit of a heritage and texture to the building based on the initial massing explorations. Again, also looking at the zoning constraints and the existing fabric of the street. Uh, we took the comments from them. Obviously, there's discussions about height. It's always a point of discussion, but really 
a big part of it was that pedestrian feel, that public realm feel, that uh, integration of how this building starts to uh, work with the existing Somerset Street Village context. You can see the brick will always be part, as we go through this process, uh, always be a, a, a corner piece of, 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 the prop, of the proposal concept. Next slide. Let's look through these quickly. Next slide. This was now to our formal UDRP presentation. We took uh, cues from comments from planning staff, our heritage consultant, the UDRP panel, um, knowing that if we were going to approach the site as a tower, then we really had to focus our efforts on the podium uh, and, and how that transitions up. Uh, next slide. And Steve Gauthier, uh, the white box was, was one of the concepts that was added in order to uh, try to create that ground floor podium, but yet still provide the density as per the allowable uh, nine stores that is allowed on Somerset Street. Next slide. Again, we took cues from planning staff, again, from the urban design review panel. We took a bit of a step back, did an analysis to really look at the street, looked at what are the potentials of the street, uh, the idea of providing this as a bookend on Somerset Street with the, with the building at the corner of Bank and Somerset. Uh, and then with that, in a contemporary fashion, uh, start to integrate the detailing, the, the materiality, the programming, the layers of requirements for traditional Main Street ground floors of 4.5 meters, transparency, the public realm. And so all of this was overlaid on top of each other to create the podium massing that we did. Next slide. Uh, also removing the nine story portion uh, in order to set back the tower, as Steve Gauthier said, this is a very small footprint. This is 6,600 square feet when uh, the maximum allowable for residential is uh, 8,000 uh, under the high building guidelines. So what it did, as you can see here, is again, trying to create that public ground feel in a contemporary fashion, but yet still pay homage to the, to the fabric that is Somerset Street. Next slide. Again, I think most of you have seen this now, again, to show kind of the, the relationships of that continuous ground plane. Um, I think overall, what we really wanted to highlight was over the last year, we've worked collaboratively, not only addressing the feedback um, from planning staff, the urban design review panel, uh, contrary to what some of our fellow speakers might say, uh, heritage staff, planning staff, the counselor's office, and those of the immediate neighbor. Uh, the massing was adjusted to remove the nine story portion away from Somerset Street at the request of the Urban Design Review Panel, Heritage Staff, and the Counselor's Office. The tower massing was slim, set back an additional slim back, set back to 6.4 meters, as, as, as Steve has said on Somerset. Again, at the request of planning staff and heritage staff. The, steps, the tower was set back along the north facade, another 1.4 meters at the request of planning staff and the immediate neighbor. The tower footprint, as mentioned, is, is only 6,600 square feet. The project introduced a covered garage access along the north and west facades at the request of the immediate neighbors and the counselor's office to eliminate, as Steve said, noise, car, lights, exhaust, and providing further security concerns with regards to drug use and homelessness along the neighbor, neighbor's property, which is currently happening. This covered area was reduced in height further to minimize the impact against the neighbors. We, were adding, we are adding planting boxes along the roof line to further eliminate, eliminate overlook. Uh, to note, there are none of the units on the north facade will have balcony access. Um, our clients uh, has committed to providing new fencing for the northern neighbor properties. And we have also committed to the neighbors and the council that we will revisit the proposed start cladding along uh, for that uh, covered uh, uh, garage access area with a lighter color. Uh, Mr. Campos, just, uh, just to give you a heads up, um, I've let you go quite a bit uh, over yeah. the time, but uh, if you have you know, one last slide you want to show before we move on. No, this is, this is it. Uh, like I said, all in all, the client has added over a million dollars into the construction budget costs directly to address some of the neighbor's concerns. And, and so I think it's clear to, to see that over the last year and so that uh, we've worked very collaboratively with everybody involved to try to make this project happen. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks opportunity to see the beautiful architecture of the Dominion Chalmers Church in that uh, last image there, uh, just on the block to the north. Um, now owned, of course, by the best university in Ottawa.
Carlton. Fleury's gone, so it's not as fun. Um, so we have uh, three delegations on this. So our first one is Sylvia Faulkner, followed by Jack Hanna and Mark Vanass. Uh, Jack, of course, is with the Santa Ana Community Association. Sorry, Sylvia, I had you on the list as Sylvia, and I called you such, but it's Sylvie Faulkner. You're just on mute. Just unmute yourself, and then you can have your five minutes. Nope, I can still, you're still on mute, unfortunately. There you go. Thank you. So I am a director of the Condominium Corporation um, 643 at 364 C Cooper Street. So I'm representing the owners of our corporation today. Um, so I was just wondering, um, I noticed, I looked at who's on the, on the panel today, planning committee. I don't believe that you're um, center town, but perhaps you've been to Somerset Village. And there's a reason it's called Somerset Village. It's a traditional main street with lovely uh, three-story character homes that have been um, converted mostly to restaurants and trees lining the streets. And there are tourists and people from all over Ottawa that come here to experience something they don't have at home. And I think Ottawa should celebrate and push to keep Somerset Street a village cachet and traditional character. Um, we understand um, that new housing and development is part of Alderwa's future. And um, the developer first proposed a 16 story, which has now increased to 18 story. And I believe as uh, Steve um, Gauthier mentioned that this site is uh, the portion, the small portion of the site is a maximum of 16. So I don't understand why it's now 18. It's much too high. It's twice the height. Uh, that the UDRP recommended, which is nine stories for the site. It also creates a precedent and it does nothing to complement the character of Somerset Village. I know that they talked about a bookend, but the bookend is not 18 stories high, I'm sorry. And it's totally disproportionate with Bank and O'Connor and Somerset. Um, finally, the architecture of the building itself is, I have to say, is unattractive. Um, the four-story portion or podium is, the, is a nod to the traditional street, um, street district, but the 14 stories above is, is a, just a high gray tower. It's, it might be slim, but it literally towers over the entire streetscape and surrounding city blocks. Um, if our city is to make concessions to developers, we should expect that they come up with something architecturally interesting that adds to the beauty of center town instead of bringing it down. So our request to you as a corporation is twofold, that the height of the building be reduced and that the building itself has a better architectural design that complements the traditional character and cachet of Somerset Village our city of Ottawa, that is the capital of Canada as a whole. So thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, see your counselor, is there uh, Councillor McKinney? Oh, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Vice Chair. Uh, thank you, Sylvie, for uh, coming out to speak to us and, um, and for the uh, submission that you made. Uh, I read that very carefully. And as you know, I've been working, uh, my, greatest concerns through this have been the effect on um, uh, residents to to the north. Um, but also I just wanted to, I, and, and I'll, I will address those a bit later, I just wanted to uh, ask from your perspective, uh, I know you're close by um, and I agree with you that that, especially that one block of Somerset really has such uh, uh, heritage significance. Um, and if if we look at what is allowed on the on that on the Somerset portion, which is up to nine stories, uh, and then if we didn't allow for the extension of the sixteen stories, there could be a tower of sixteen stories. Uh, I think abutting abutting your property actually, um, and I just wonder from 
from your perspective, uh, if, if you feel that any of the design has sort of mitigated the, um, what could what what could be if it were two separate um, developments? What do you do? You feel that this design has mitigated any of the the uh, negative impacts of what could be like a nine story and a sixteen story kind of in behind? If 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 you know those heritage homes would have to be removed, but it would be as of as of right. Of course, we wouldn't even be having that discussion necessarily at at committee. Yeah, um, well, the, I, my understanding is the 16-story portion, 16 story portion maximum, the R5, is very slim. And the nine-story the nine is the majority of the site. Um, so um, I still think, um, you know, that we should, I don't understand why it's 18. Um, so, you know, we are we are not right at the corner of O'Connor and um, and um, Cooper. We're at, you know we're after uh, Mark Vanas's home and the other traditional home for the first uh, condominium there. Ours is a seven story and I, it's red brick. It it does represent the character. So I think it's possible to have a nice building. I think I I think it's just um, you know. We understand that there has to be development, but you know, and this is a hard conversation to have just off the cuff. But I think if we can keep it to nine stories or lower, um, this is what we're asking for: is to lower the height and to have a better, an architecture that's not a gray tower that's going to be well. For you know, I have to say it's it's not it's it's ugly. Um, I understand that the developers. Um, I don't understand why it's not possible to have great architecture, especially in the center town where there are interesting buildings. So I would say that the 16 stories would have less impact than the full, what they're proposing now, if that's any, and uh, we do appreciate the concessions of the setbacks and the red brick, but they are not, unfortunately, in, in our point of view enough to to keep the the cachet of um, Somerset Street and the and the district. Okay, no, I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And thanks for coming out, Sylvie. Thank you. Alright, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Ms. Faulkner. I don't see any further questions. Appreciate your time here today. Our next speaker, as mentioned, is Jack Hanna. Hi, thank you very much. I'm speaking on behalf of the Centertown Community Association. The Community Association favors big, big increase in density. We want a dense urban core. We're okay with big buildings, but not at the cost of trashing good urban design. I want to go back to the Urban Design Review Panel and their comments in their last review of this project. And let's be clear, the only substantive change to the tower since the Urban Design Review Panel looked at this is to make it even taller. The UDRP said, and I'd like to quote directly, the UDRP opposed this tower, pardon me, a tower at this site in the strongest language I've ever heard the UDRP use. I'd like to quote directly from the verbal remarks of the chair of the UDRP, Mark, remarks that he made at the conclusion of the UDRP's consideration of this, this particular proposal. He said, quote, we always thought this is a mid-rise site. Let us be very clear. We do not believe this is a tower site. It is overwhelming. It is far too much density, end quote. The UDRP understands that a traditional main street and Somerset is a traditional main street is not a place for a high rise. So given the UDRP's opposition to a tower at this site, what did the developer do? They revised the design and came back with a taller tower. I'll repeat that. The UDRP said no tower and the developer came back with a taller tower. This proposal goes against every relevant planning document, but that's obvious. The zoning and every planning document says Somerset is a traditional main street and that's important. It should not be casually tossed aside. The UDRP in its written report did address the possibility that the city would ignore the UDRP's advice. It did say, if you're going to allow a tower, there are things you can do to make a tower more palatable. 
and the city and the developer have agreed to do some of these things. But to be clear, the UDRP opposed a tower at this site in the strongest possible language. One UDR, UDRP architect was clear about what this development would mean for the future. She said, and I quote, this sets a precedent for all other projects. She was referring to the establishment of a precedent for high rises on a traditional main street. If this is built, the neighborhood character of Somerset is massively altered because the neighborhood character is what physically is there. If this is built, you know in future, Foten will point a finger at this tower to justify other tall buildings on Somerset. It will be a precedent for this traditional main street and other traditional main streets. The Center Town Community Association urges you to honor, set, honor Somerset as a traditional main street. Do not put a tower there. Do not set a precedent for a street with a delightful character that should not become a canyon of high rises. Preserve the heritage character of Somerset. Thank you. Uh, great, thank you, Mr. Hanna. I am not uh, seeing any questions for you. Appreciate your, your time here today. Our next speaker is Mark Vanass. I believe Mark, I believe you wrote at our uh, at our heritage committee as well, if I'm not mistaken. No, I, I actually think I work for the city now and the, maybe the developer. So thanks for having me on the line today. I appreciate uh, having the opportunity. Uh, for those who don't know, who I am. Uh, my name's Mark Manas, and my spouse and I, Lena Pietrantonio, own uh, 354 Cooper, which is the residence at the immediate north of the property. It's a heritage one. We bought it about a year and a few months ago. So we actually came in right at this time. Uh, great due diligence on my part. Uh, and by, I also represent today my immediate neighbor, 356 Cooper. Uh, that's uh, Barry Doucette and Colleen Moore. Now, I've heard a lot of things today, so actually my, my uh, intervention today is not going to be that, that significant because I've got some good comfort from Roberta's comments, Tim, and also from Steve Gozzi that they're going to be sensitive to the northern and the western property. What I'd like to mention, though, what seems to escape the picture is when we're talking about R5 and the justification to have a tower, uh, I want this committee to actually really understand that the R5 is actually a big rectangle that includes four properties. That is our, my property, my neighbor's property, the one on the corner of O'Connor and the property that is owned by the developer that was demolished. So that forms a big red rectangle of R5, which actually the intent was to build Metropolitan 3, the domicile third condo that Sylvie Faulkner was alluding to. So it was all part of that development and and domicile used to own 356 cooper so that's how that all kind of came in so we we it's not a hidden secret that we uh, we don't like the height we don't like the mass and uh we are concerned that the uh the zoning of r5 is actually used as a trampoline for tm so i'm not going to repeat what mr Hanna said we i think that is clear and known what i think i'd, I'd like to address today is just to ensure that the members do realize that the initial plan here was to have an open air laneway along the northern line, which is a, along my backyard and down the west on my neighbor's backyard, open air, which uh, Steve alluded to, Steve Gozzi about noise pollution and so forth. And we're actually really happy with the developer group that they actually listened and allowed to consider in closing that for a mutual benefit of getting sketchy individuals out of that corner. Trust me, I won't get into the detail. Uh, what, what I'd like to mention specifically today, which I didn't have the information when I presented at the Built Heritage uh, Subcommittee, is the height of the garage is, I'm gonna just round things off, 13 feet. So it actually extends three feet over my 10 foot fence of black cladding. And I know we're going to work on that softening. And my backyard is only 10 feet from the foundation. So it's actually a foundation of my house is 10 feet away from this garage. We're willing to look, raise the red flag on the, 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 the sorry, the white, the, the white flag. Thanks, Lena. She's actually whispering things for me. 
we're with, willing to uh, lift a white flag and say, look, the 13 feet, it's three feet over my fence, we'll work on the cladding and so forth. Okay, good. But what I didn't realize last time is on the western side where my neighbor, uh, Barry and Colleen, that garage actually goes from the four meter height to a six meter height. So that's just about 20 feet. And that's black cladding in a great chunk of their property on the west side. So the softening for my three feet of black cladding is actually pretty easy compared to what Barry and Colleen will have. So I know, uh, and thanks to the transparency and the openness, the developer group did take a call from Barry Doucette to say, look, can we work on this? Because it's actually a real big eyesore on these two, the only two residential heritage, single family homes that are in that corner, right? The, the corner that's not, uh, you know, part of the streetscape, right? We're always looking at this from Somerset and O'Connor. We're looking at the back end. So I, I asked the committee to make sure, and I know my counselor is actually working hard to make sure that this actually is addressed for the sake of those heritage homes. So on that note, I, I see back 35 seconds, which is 34 seconds better than I did last time. So there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, great. Thank you very much, Mr. Vanessa. So a question for you from Councillor McKinney. Thanks, uh, thanks, Chair. Thanks, uh, Mark, for for coming out. I'm going to actually miss you when this is all over. Huh? But, I told you, I have a wine fridge. I have a wine fridge. You're okay. welcome. <laughs> um, probably take you up on that. Um, yeah. So, I I I can certainly I I know that we have met several times. You've met with the developer. We've really worked through the the iterations of of this design and. And I just want, um, I, you know, my colleagues understand that, you know, Mark and Lena at, at 354 Cooper and, and the, the, the neighboring property uh, really did, uh, when he says, you know, lifted the white flag, uh, that, that absence of any um, possible tower separation means that, that their properties, they can, you know, they could before this was, um, if, if it is approved and, and built, uh, they had the right to, to build up to 16 stories. They had the right to build a, a tower, but they're, they're actually ceding that right uh, as, as property owners because uh, with this 16 stories, uh, there would not be that, um, there, there would not be the room for that, that tower separation. So, uh, the, you know, the things that we worked on, the, you know, the wraparound podium, the red brick uh, around the podium, uh, the, the enclosed garage was, was important. It would have been nice to move it into the center. We didn't get that far, but, but we did get the, the enclosure. So just to say again, and you know, I brought this up at uh, Built Heritage and we'll continue to work on it. Uh, but um, you know, when we talk about working with the applicant, with the developer about you know, the, the cladding and softening the, um, uh, you know, softening that uh, uh, that parking garage uh, for both uh, you and 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 your neighbor. Uh, it does go up. You're right from four meters to six, which is significant. So that softening and that conversation um, uh, will happen, Mark, for for the entire uh, black uh, cladding area. Uh, it was what um, I intended when I gave the direction at uh, at Built Heritage. So. I do appreciate you coming out. I appreciate um, your perspective on this. This has been uh, a long process. Um, and uh, I did just want to uh, re reiterate kind of the, the concessions that, that you as a homeowner um, gave up, you know, uh, to, to get some of the uh, improvements back on, uh, on, this, uh, on this development. So, so thank you. Thank you for your time and your, um, and uh, always, uh, you know, um, ensuring that it was always looking towards a better development. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mark. Appreciate uh, seeing you again. Okay, cheers. Okay, so that's that's it for the delegations. Um, now we have an opportunity to ask uh, questions of the, of the applicant, uh, followed by questions to staff. So um, do any members of the committee have questions uh, to the applicant. I know uh, Councillor McKinney likely wants to, I mean, I know they've said uh, comments about what they're working on here uh, as well and what they've already 
been working on. Um, so we'll let them wrap up before we, we do any vote on this, but uh, just any questions to the applicant? Sorry. I'm, yeah, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, um, I just I just wanted to to confirm again with the applicant, um, you know, in terms of the uh, the landscaping plan that we'll work on through through the site plan control process, um, that that we will look at the entire cladding, not just uh, what is backing on to um, uh, Mark's uh, property, but the the six meter in height as well. That we will look at the that entire. Um, uh, a space area uh, for uh, for softening for the residents to uh, to the north. Yes, yeah, um, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, yeah, the um, through the site plan control um, review <clears throat> process, which is uh, ongoing now, um, discussions around materiality, uh, landscaping, things of that nature, um, will be will be addressed, and there'll be plenty of opportunity for further discussions to to refine that aspect of the application. Thank you. Uh, Chair, did you want me to, I see um, Co Chair uh, Gower also has some questions. I could wrap up now or do it right after him. It's certainly, it's it's up to you. I mean, well, you can go sure. to Councilor Gower, you could, you could speak right now if, if, you, if you so please. No, I, I, I can now. I think that, uh, you know, I think we've been through several iterations of, of the design, certainly. And, you know, this, this final design, there's no doubt, is, is an improvement uh, over the first two submissions. Um, especially the removal of that bulky mid middle portion of the building, uh, which really did make it a nine story uh, high rise uh, on onto Somerset. So it, it did get pulled back. Um, I think it's important to remember also that, you know, the, while this, the allowable 16 stories is a slender portion uh, pushed back to the North, uh, we could have, uh, without this development, um, you know, a 16-story building at the corner of uh, Cooper and O'Connor. Um, so this, you know, uh, well, you know, it's never perfect, certainly, but it certainly does, you know, with the uh, that middle portion being removed, the slender tower um, design, um, and and then wrapping the the brick around that entire uh, podium. Uh, with the with the step back at the fourth story, certainly, um, you know, helped define the podium. It created just um, you know better public realm, better yeah, human scale uh, building uh, at grade. So it's you know it's replacing a parking lot. We have to replace parking lots in uh, in the downtown, uh, but we you know we have to be sensitive to uh, the surrounding community. We have to ensure that our our traditional main streets, you know, retain their, um, uh, you know, their, retain their, their, their um, human scale, if you will, they, you know, that's what we want. Um, and I think for the, you know, the, through the iterations, we've gotten much closer. So, you know, I look forward to working with, uh, with the applicant uh, on the landscaping plan uh, that will happen through site plan. Um, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, the, that black cladding is, is softened. We've got plantings on that garage and, um, you know, to, to, to really soften the, the interface with uh, those neighboring properties uh, to the north. So I thank everyone for, uh, for the time on this. It was a, a lot of back and forth and uh, uh, especially to, uh, to the residents. So thank you. Uh, great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor McKenney. So I, I, I think Councillor Gower was okay now. I think so. I don't think um, we have any questions for the applicant, uh, nor for staff. I uh, appreciate Councillor McKenney's comments on, uh, on this file. So I'm going to, well, Tim, I like to read the things. You know how I work. I like to read oh, the yes. recommendation. Do it in a funny voice, a pirate voice or something, at least. Make it entertaining. That would be foolish. That would absolutely be foolish. You and your Wolverine beard, whatever you got going on there. Okay. So item two is official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment for 311 Somerset West and 234 and 236. I'm read that one that a plan committee recommend council approve the following. A, amend the current official plan, volume 2A, secondary plan, center, center town, secondary plan, 
for 311 Somerset Street West and 234, 236 O'Connor Street, 18 story mixed use building as detailed in document two. B, amend the new official plan, volume 2A, urban secondary plan, secondary, center town secondary plan for 311 Somerset Street West and 234, 236 O'Connor Street, 18 story mixed use building as detailed in document 2B. C, amend the zoning bylaw 2008 250 for 311 Somerset Street West and 234, 236 O'Connor Street to permit an 18 story built mixed use building as detailed in documents three and four. Two, that the planning committee recommend council that the implementing zoning bylaw does not proceed to council until such time that an agreement under section 37 of the Planning Act is executed. And three, that the planning committee approve the consultation detail sections of this report. Is the item carried, Timothy? Carried. 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 Thanks, Tim. Now, item three, which is the heritage permit for this uh, development, so that the planning committee recommend that council approve the application for new construction at 311 Somerset Street West and 234, 236 O'Connor Street, according to plans prepared by Figure Architects Collective, dated March 28, 2022, to delegate the authority for minor design changes to the general manager of planning, real estate, and economic development department and three, approve the issuance of the heritage permits for each application with a three-year expiry date from the date of issuance unless otherwise extended by council. Is item number three carried? Carried. 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 So we move to item number four, which is zoning bylaw amendment for 180 Canada Avenue. Um, this is, uh, for all you Cheney fans, this is the property across the road from the Holiday Inn. Not sure how many early 2000s hip hop fans I have here, but anyway. Um, so it's a six story mixed use building with underground parking uh, on Canada Avenue direct across from the, the Canada, um, you know, the most poorly planned mall in the city of Ottawa. Um, so personal opinion only. So we do have a couple speakers on this item. I'm not sure that we need, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward application in terms of what it, uh, what it looks like. If you've seen the report, you see that the development as it as it's laid out on Canada Avenue. I don't know if we necessarily need a presentation from from staff on this, but we do have a couple uh, delegations, so we can go straight to that if the will of committee. I just feel I think uh, Councillor Moffat that staff may have to answer a couple questions after the delegation, but sure. Okay. Yeah, we can we can you know if there's questions we can have them sort of queue up the. Uh, the slide deck uh, to see what uh, to see what it, but again it's a, it's a six story mixed use building um, one story has a certain design top flash stories have a different design uh, fits in with the landscape and again directly across from the commercial plaza so our first delegation i assume the delegations are here uh, dustin muse oh right it's got a message um, yeah, delegation. We have delegation from the applicant as well, which we should go to first. Sorry. So we'll um, we'll first go to the applicant on this, which is uh, Tiberish Holmes and uh, Jeremy Silbert is here, as well as Caleb Blakely and Greg Mignon from Novatech. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I can speak briefly to this uh, on behalf of the applicant. Um, and I guess at this point, we have prepared a presentation, which we'd be happy to um, offer, uh, but perhaps uh, we could hold off and simply respond to any questions following the public delegations, if that's uh, your preference. Well, if you just want to zip through it pretty quick, just, uh, just so that committee members and the public get a chance to see exactly what we're talking about here. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, just for the record, my name is Caleb Blakely. I'm a planner with Novatech. Uh, so we filed this zoning amendment on behalf of Canada Woods Inc. Uh, they're the they were awarded the sale of this property through a city initiative um, to grow the town center. Uh, so you, I'm sure uh, many people are familiar with the site. Um, it's uh, approximately one hectare of vacant land. Uh, it's bounded by city park land to the west, which is to be expanded uh, to the north in the future, um, as well as to the east is uh, lands for future development similar to the site. Um, across Canada Ave is the Centrum, uh, which is a regional shopping and entertainment center, as well as a transit hub for the community. Um, if we go to the next slide. 
Um, so this diverse mix of uses makes up the uh, Kanata, part of the Kanata Town Center, uh, which shows a bit more in detail um, on this slide. Um, if we skip, um, I guess to speak very briefly to policy context. Uh, so as mentioned, this is part of the Kanata Town Center, um, which has been, um, had detailed plans for its future growth uh, for many years. So uh, the site is part of uh, the designation for the central business district. Uh, so that env envisions a mix of uses at transit supportive densities um, and uh, with a mix of uses to accommodate uh, both residential and non-residential uses. If we skip to, uh, we can skip the, the slide. Um, so the site <gasps> to accommodate a, um, a six story mixed use building uh, will accommodate uh, approximately 300 residential units with uh, commercial uses that line Kanata Avenue and wrap the corner of the building as shown on this rendering. Um, if we skip to the next plan. Um, so this is the site plan that's to show uh, the development. Um, it illustrates a future public laneway that's to be constructed uh, to the immediate east that will provide access to the site um, and connecting to Kanata Ave. Um, so the majority of parking is to be provided below grade, um, although there is a fair number of spaces at grade which will accommodate uh, visitors, uh, commercial users uh, on site. Um, you can see there's a large um, amenity area to the rear for the residents, which will be um, kind of set within a backdrop of a rock cut, uh, given the, the um, topography of the site. Um, and then in terms of Kanata Avenue, um, the site's intended to evoke a main street character uh, in terms of wide sidewalks, uh, street trees for shading, uh, street furniture, and as well as a large open uh, and accessible public area um, at the corner of Kanata Ave and the future laneway. Um, I can touch briefly on the um, purpose of the zoning amendment. Uh, so as, as mentioned, the, the development is designed in conformance with the official plan and the secondary plan uh, for this area in terms of the use and built form, uh, which will see this area transition towards more compact um, environment uh, with a strong emphasis on pedestrians. Um, so the purpose of the zoning amendment is to uh, modify certain provisions of the existing mixed use center zone. Um, so the first um, amendment relates to the maximum floor space index. So that's to permit a slight increase um, in additional gross floor area um, of up to about 15% beyond what's otherwise permitted. Um, and this is given the, the zone itself um, has a floor space index that is uh, relatively low for this site and its intended use uh, is very much inconsistent with the maximum height, which actually contemplates high rise up to 11 stories. Um, so despite this, the slight increase, um, the development will still maintain a desirable mid-rise form, which is very much uh, in scale with its surroundings. Um, the second amendment similarly relates to floor space index. Um, and it is to permit a reduction to the minimum non-residential component. Um, so that would allow for a reduced um, gross floor area associated with commercial uses um, while ensuring that Kanata Ave um, remains as envisioned as a main street supported by street level commercial uses. Um, so the site is, is designed in keeping with this, it'll accommodate uh, retail, um, shops, restaurants, small businesses, all kind of lining uh, the street. Um, and this is, the reduction is, is in light of a couple considerations. One is that the, um, the minimum requirement is kind of well beyond what would be viable at this site, particularly in a um, nearing post COVID 
environment. There's little uh, demand right now in the market, uh, especially for commercial, which would perhaps be on an upper story. Um, further, there's of course across the street, um, the Centrum is expected to be the focus of more larger scale commercial um, in the future, given the availability of land uh, and develop, redevelopment. Uh, so it's envisioned that our site will complement this with its um, more smaller scale commercial. Um, I see I am out of time, um, but I, I guess I would conclude the last uh, amendment is uh, in relation to parking uh, for the residential. And that's just in light of proximity to rapid transit, uh, which is in 400 meters of the site. And uh, just considerations to limit the extent of blasting that has to occur to accommodate this um, parking that's to be below. Wow, the that's what it is. It's the parking. Yeah, so I want to stay on mute when you shout out things. But mm -hmm. uh, thanks so much, uh, Kayla. I appreciate uh, the presentation. I have a, I don't know what the next delegation is going to be about, but I, we've already heard a preview of it. Uh, so our, um, we'll go directly to uh, Dustin. Oh, you are muted for a sec there. So. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you so much. I've never been in a meeting kind of like like this before. I like on so Zoom. I'm, well, like in a, like a more professional way. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be so bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I think I get the like. It's I don't know the interest that brought me here is it's a bit different. Um, I, I grew up in the neighborhood and it's like, I, I, I think I understand the vision that the, the city has for the architecture or something of, of this place. Like I get the concept and what they're looking to aim for. The problem is, <sighs> there's something else that's been living in that forest for like, I don't know, probably about 15 years, something like this. And there's a whole friggin' history behind it. But basically like, there's, I don't know how to say it. Um, there's like the place where the boys play or something like that. Like there's, if, if you notice how with time and development, like you look at the themes, right? Downtown, it's all grid. And in, and then the evolution of the model, uh, Kanata was really the uh, prototype suburb for the, the nation in its design concept. And it was a very good model for its, you know, it was, it was, it's a very good model. We still are living in the in the model. Yeah, but uh, there's there's something tricky about it because with time and growth, it's like there's just more space that gets taken over. You know, there's kind of like this densification and uh, you know all this stuff. But it's like in the neighborhood growing up here, there, there's like another space that's more important to the local lived reality, I guess. That's what we want to say. Like, there's a lot of stores. And for the kids, usually the, the okay, like, it's like, if you grew up in the neighborhood, the best place since you were a child was the playground. And as that, with time and age, and like it is the first prototype model, there that that space, especially for the youth, it it kind of like almost devolves into uh, like a return to uh, the free space that is unowned. Like it, this is going to be too difficult to explain, but. I don't know, like, 
if you knew the neighborhood so well that you had to live in it, you would you would know that the place in the forest where there is good land that belongs to no one is very important. And in a lot of ways, that was all that was left for the boys in the neighborhood to play on. And it's like kind of like a natural park on its own. Oh, did I just lose? Me? Oh, am I still there? Okay, still so here. I gotta. I no. yeah. Still here. D does this make sense in a way? What I'm well, getting at? To a degree, but I mean, your comment about the land that's not owned. Yeah. Um, it is owned by the you applicant. Know, by the applicant, and so somebody would just need to apply. Apply to own that land. Well, no, you have to buy it. I know. And, and like that, and and that's that's the whole also the center corpse of the concept because like there is a bunch of city owned land here too though right there's a, there's a whole segment of this that's actually is public property and that can be used by the public yeah but the public the notion of what is public is different too it's gonna be pretty obvious once the site gets developed and you can't hang out on it anymore um. Yes, but and then the, the, the part that's city owned is the part that's not developed and has signs and pathways and whatnot that in, explains it's city owned. Yes, I know, but so the secret behind Canada is that it's it's kind of like the opposite of its meaning. There was never any land here that was not owned. And that's kind of the opposite of what Canada actually means. So it's like a paradox. And it's that it's and it's actually the way we come to understand uh, like what the landscape means. You know, you guys talk a lot about like streetscapes and like all these architectural trends and stuff, which are nice. Those are things, right? But in the context of what the new world was sought for and what Canada meant, even the heritage, like it's, it's the environment that, that needs to be, it's our understanding and ability to connect to our environment in a pristine way, which is what gives us our sense of space and freedom. None of these environments are free. They're all owned. They're all someone's property. Even when you say public stuff, that's that's a property, and it, it 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 there's a whole history of what it was like for the people who grew here to connect with that through the evolution of of the model. Like, base. Okay, I have to cut you off. So the time your time's up, and uh, but Councillor Curry, who is your councillor, uh, well, I believe, um, is the councillor for the area in question, um, has a question for you or a comment. So I guess I comment on a question, really, uh, Dustin. So I did want to. So thank you. You know, I, I think you're probably speaking for a lot of people in Canada that really uh, love our natural green spaces and, you know, probably watch the trees coming down and felt very sad about that. Uh, to Councillor Moffat's point, this is a private piece of property where a building is allowed. But I understand your larger point, your much bigger vision. The center area that Councillor Moffat was referring to is Bill Terran Park, named, I think, aptly. Uh, because it was Bill Tarrant's vision. Well, not just Bill Tarrant's vision, but many people, but Bill Tarrant brought it to, uh, to fruition. The center area will always remain as a park with a big lake in it for you know people to enjoy with pathways and access to it where there are stairs up off of Canada Avenue. So I just wanted to make sure that you did understand that because I've had a lot of emails where people are asking me, is the whole park going? Because there's this building and then there's another yes. building going next door. So I, I just want to make sure you do understand that that will stay. Yeah, the okay. the The thing is, is that I know with the current plans, it's it's not going to be good. Yeah, it's 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 gonna like because Bill Terrence Park was a very is very much a it's a very big failure to be honest. Like no one uses that place, and the place that gets used, you could say low, like what by the indigenous of the place. It, you really could because people from both sides of the river come here 
even as far as carp, boys on their bicycles are biking further <laughs> to come to this particular place because it's a natural playground realized by the boys in and on the rocks. Mm -hmm. And that's very different. And because also I basically followed this for a long I'm time. Just gonna, I'm and just going to jump in. I'm just going to jump I in. I was convinced you. that in 2010, yeah. the place was safe. And all these decisions are coming from the older generation without the inclusion or the approval of the young ones of the place. Anyone? Yeah, so I'm just gonna cut that off because now we're on to uh, youth born in Canada being referred to as indigenous. Um, I don't think we have time for that here today. Um, Councilor Curry, I assume you're done with that one. Yeah, I just want to make sure that that was clear to everybody that the Beltaran Park will remain. These buildings are going to be circling uh, that park and close to an LRT and close to commercial. I'll have other comments on that later, but I wanted to make sure that was not confusing for people. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Our next speaker is Nicholas Harish. Hello. Hello, Nicholas. Yeah, so I don't know. The main problem I see with this is that Although you said like, you said like, uh, what was it like 600 residential buildings or residential units all backing onto that one road. Like, I just don't see how that's going to happen. I, I just don't see how the traffic is getting manageable on that. Okay. Have you, have you consulted the traffic management report that was attached to the zoning application? No, I'm just saying by my personal experience. Okay. Like, and uh, the thing is, I agree with Dustin as well. Like I know that I know people who go in those forests a lot on the on the adjacent side to the plant. And I feel like it just doesn't make sense to construct something right there instead of just you know somewhere in like a field. Like why does it have to be right near the Bill Tarrant Park where like everyone enjoys themselves? Why does it have to be there? That's like my big question. Okay, well, I think I've already established that. Anything else? Uh, yeah, that's just what I wanted to say. Like, again, like with all the traffic there, it's just not a good spot. Like, I don't see why you couldn't just put it like, like a different location. Okay. Um, thanks. The way planning works is that people buy property. If they want to build something on the property, they apply to build something on the property. And then they come to us and say, can we build this on the property? If it meets the policies, we say yes. Um, we don't say, can you sell it to someone else? So it can just not be built and people can just squat in the forest. There's right, a park thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I don't think so. Any questions for the applicants? Seeing none. Questions for staff? Seeing none. So the recommendation in front of us. So, Councillor Curry, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to make a couple of comments about the commercial. So we, uh, in meeting with Penn Equity, who owns Centrum, and meeting with the Canada Central BIA, we've had a lot of discussions about what particular commercial will go there, because the end vision is that Canada Aven Avenue will be a main street. And, you know, we talked about this, I think, in Councillor King's ward a couple of weeks ago about how main streets sometimes are kind of a hod hodgepodge. This will be quite well planned with this building and then the next building beside it with a center area that will allow for shopping and people to be walking back and forth as they indicated with the wide sidewalk. And across the street from that is, as Councillor Moffat said, the Holiday Inn, but also a Best Buy parking lot. It's a massive parking lot that is supposed to have uh, commercial in it as well. But right now it kind of looks and feels nothing like a main street, but in meetings with Penn Equity and Canada Central BIA, we're gonna be having doing some surveys, finding out what people want. And Penn Equity is actually committed to putting the commercial there that would make it look and feel more like a main street. So this is step one of a larger vision for Canada app. So stay tuned for the next building that will be coming. And this building will be more uh, family units. The next building will be 55 plus. And we're also going to be surveying the people who live in the buildings all around Bill Tarrant Park to ask what type of commercial they would like. The builders are not saying they will absolutely do whatever we say, but they're going to try very hard. So it was, it was a pleasure working with the developers here because they are committed to making it feel and look like a main street. So I certainly would ask for your support on this. And uh, I think it, uh, it starts us off on a good plan for Canada. All right, thank you very much, Councillor Curry. 
So the recommendation in front of us is that the Planning Committee recommend Council approve an amendment designed by Law 2008-250 for 180 Canada Avenue to permit a six-story mixed-use building with underground parking as detailed document two. And two, the Planning Committee approve the consultation detail section of this report. Gary. 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 Thank you. So that's the that's it for the, the agenda. Um, there are no in-camera items. There's no notices of motion. I'm not aware of any inquiries. No other business. So on adjournment, is that carried? Thank you and best of luck to everyone out there. I know that there's a lot of folks that are still coming online. I know half of uh, the ward I represent is still out of power and, and uh, like Kathy emptying their, well, if you're lucky enough to have a sump pit, you get to empty your sump pit and flush the toilet using your sump pit. But the upcoming rain is quite, uh, it's quite concerning for everyone. So hopefully we can, uh, we can get some progress on this today and connect all those folks to, uh, who don't have running water as well as the folks that do have running water. So thank you. Appreciate everyone today. Enjoy the rest thank of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Scott.